Hi, this is Ann from Design Bundles, and today is all about raster and vector graphics. So the main thing to remember with raster graphics is that if you resize them, you're going to lose quality. They're going to look blurry. And with vector graphics, you can make them as big as you want and still not lose quality at all. But there's a whole lot more to learn about raster and vector graphics. So let's get started. So first we'll go over the raster and vector file types. So if we're talking about raster, these are usually file types like JPEG, PNG, TIFF, BMP, and GIF. And then for vectors, we're usually talking about AI, EPS, SVG, and DXF. And I say usually because sometimes you'll be given raster images like photos that have been placed into an AI file, which does not make that photo vector. With raster images, they are made up of pixels and vectors are made up of like mathematical equations. Although you as an artist do not have to worry about that part, but let's switch over to Photoshop so I can show you the difference between a raster image there. And then we'll go to illustrator and I'll show you vectors. All right, here's a photo and this is a raster image. So if we zoom in on this, it starts looking a little blurry when we get really close. But if we go even further, you can start seeing the little separated pixels. Now let's look at a vector graphic in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, here we've got text and text, if it's a font is almost always vector. So if we zoom in on this, it just continues to stay crisp and clear. Let's zoom back out and we'll zoom in on this vector rocket. As you can see, these colors are still maintaining their crispness. They are perfect. And you can continue to resize vectors as big as you want, even as big as a billboard, and they'll stay that clear. Now, when you're using the tools inside Illustrator to make something like this, that is a vector graphic. But when you export it, you could easily export as a raster graphic. So if you wanted to upload something to Instagram, you're going to want to create a PNG file or a JPEG file, and those are both raster. So if you export that and you zoom in really, really far, you'll be able to see those little pixels like we saw in Photoshop. All right, let's go over a few uses of raster and vector images in graphic design. So first we've got logos. Logos are almost always going to be vector and saved as an EPS, but you might need to create JPEGs or PNG files for the web, and those are raster graphics. So you can also save your logo as an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic for the web. More and more people are using those on websites now. Photos. Photos are always raster, and there's really no way around this. You can vectorize them, but it makes them look really bad. So I would just leave them in raster format. Printing. With printing, like a brochure, you're most likely going to have a mix of both vector and raster graphics. Um, it's usually best to save as a PDF so that the parts of a brochure that are vector, like fonts and logos, keep their vector qualities because PDF retains vector. But of course, you're also going to have photos and that kind of thing, which are raster. Office documents. In Word or PowerPoint, you're going to need a JPEG or a GIF. So most of the time you're going to be using raster images in Office documents. Of course, the fonts are vector, but they're pretty much the only thing that you can bring into an Office document. You can use PNG files, which can have a transparent background though. Sublimation. If you're creating a sublimation file, you are always going to want a very high quality PNG file with a transparent background, and that is raster. Cut files. Cut files for cutting machines like Cricut or Cameo, those need to be SVG files or DXF, which is a lesser used vector file type. That way the cutting machine can see the lines and know where to cut. But one thing that most cutting machines have now is software that can convert a raster image to a vector one for cutting. It just might not look that pretty. And finally, the web. For web, you can use JPEG or PNG, which are raster. But as I mentioned earlier, you can also use SVG, which is becoming more and more widely used now. And those are the uses for raster and vector images. All right, I hope after watching this video, you have a more clear understanding of the differences and when to use each. 
If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.